Sorry for all the okay starts and stops. Loosened up all the screws, bolts, excuse me, cap head bolts, and I'm gonna wiggle off this cover as best I can. And I might need to give it a couple love taps. I haven't had this off in a while. Lost a couple. I was trying to keep them all in there. And that's what happens when you get greedy. And apparently I didn't loosen that one all the way. Still one thread grabbing. Okay. Cover. Bolts. Keep them together. Cover gasket. Usually these come off clean and can be reused, and I've reused this one a couple of times now, and I'm thinking about just buying another one at this point, but I'm really not going to. It's very nice, very still in very good condition. Some people forget the gasket and do RTV around the perimeter. You can certainly do that if you want. I've had this off so many times for different shift, shaft, replacements, clutch kits, clutch adjustment, whatever. It's just been on off so many times. So this is only like my... Factory gasket plus two, this is the second gasket I bought, and I've had this clutch and things apart for access a dozen times or more. And that's all there is to say about that. Spend a couple moments talking about the clutch. People get in your shift kits, and whatever you gotta do. This is the clutch pressure plate. This is the thing that only fits one way. Some people say two, I, whatever, it fits away. You gotta make sure it links up. I have a couple photos out there of this meshing and not meshing. These six screws hold the springs, the springs are behind them. When you put this together you want to use a quarter inch drive, inch pound torque wrench, or super light, hand tight, very very gingerly. Don't try a 3 8 0 to 80 range torque wrench on this thing. It just won't be accurate enough and you'll break the post. Back these off crisscross, quarter turn in time till the spring tension's off. Quarter turn might be an extent, exaggeration, a turn, whatever, try and be even on them as you can so you don't put too much stress on the posts. Clutch plates, the fibers and the steels are in here. This is the outer clutch basket. Uh, and then there is the inner basket, which you can't see, which is behind this pressure plate. This can spin within itself. When you pull the clutch lever, the rod pushes against this top hat here, and there's a bearing, pushes the plate out, takes the tension off, and allows it to spin. This part will spin inside this part. Let go of the clutch lever, it goes back down, the springs hold the pressure and the plates grab, and then the motor is linked to the transmission. Under here, this is the shift shaft where tabs get bent and then the tranny gets jammed up. The detent arm, oil pump, uh, oil pump gear, drive gear, and star cam. You'll see that once I take the clutch off. And there's really not anything to be scared about doing on a clutch at all. You just take your time and go with it and follow my steps. At this point, you would need a clutch holder to hold it to get the main nut off. I'm going to use the impact. Impact, it'll spin it right off, no problem. If you have it in the bike, you can put the bike in sixth gear and hold the rear brake, which the lever will be on this side, and then you can break that 27 mil or might be a 30 millimeter nut. Could even be 32, I'll tell you when I get there. You can break it off that way, or you can leave it in any gear, put a 2x4 through the back wheel if it's up on a stand, and lock the wheel that way, hold it to break it loose, or make yourself a clutch holder different ways of doing things. Mm. As far as that goes, that should cover clutch removal and we'll get specifics when we get in there and I take this off and you'll have access and you'll see everything there is to see inside here. These are 10 millimeter. Use a ratchet. The Phillips head there is once you break them loose you could use like a drill with a Phillips head attachment on there and spin them out real quick if you wanted to do that. I've done it. Some people would call it risky, some people wouldn't, but that's the whole point of the Phillips. So, socket to break these things loose and to torque them. No cheating. Okay, I have these loose. Let's try and get you a better angle here. See the springs are starting to come out. I went around, did it easily. Um, remove this, spring will come with it. Stock, 97 plus YZF. Has long and short alternating springs. Doesn't matter where you start as long as they alternate. So you could do short, long, short, long, short, long, or long, short, long. You know, whatever order you want as long as they alternate around. 95, 96s all have long springs, quote unquote long springs stock. I have an EBC clutch kit. So regardless of the year, if you have the EBC, they're all the same length 
springs and they can go back in any order you really don't have to worry about it so pull them out and I'm gonna bag these so I don't lose them and we'll be right back all right this plate people are worried about and certainly you should be concerned about because if you get it wrong you'll break it and the plate I want to say is 40 something and then the basket the inner basket with the posts somewhere around 80 and I've broken one of each before and it sucks so to be safe take your sharpie pick any one you want to pick mark it and then color in the post just color it all the way in and this will come off too with some WD-40 if you want it to later on but just mark it and then if you pull this plate off just give it a little wiggle sometimes these plates stick behind it there you go I pull this off. There's the post. This is the top hat right here. That's black. This is black. As long as I put those two back together, it can never be indexed wrong. And make sure you kind of shimmy it in there so it notches up. You can't tell in this video those pictures I posted beforehand, but if you go off on this, it just won't feel right. Some will feel close. And those are the tricky ones because then you know, you know, it seems like it might be right, but it isn't. But this way it's definitely obviously not right but as long as you line those back up again black black perfect never any issues so think ahead before you do it and life will be a lot easier removing the outer pressure plate now this would be like the inner basket with the posts right here and this is the main nut you release we got to get that off before we can pull this off this top hat has an o-ring on it and it just pulls out behind this is the infamous little ball bearing talk about. The push rod, which the clutch pushes on the opposite side, uh, pushes against a roller ball bearing just to make the operation more smoother against the top hat. So be wary of that. Take your magnet, put the magnet at the end here, and then push the push rod from the other side, and that'll push, that'll drive the ball forward. And then this is the ball bearing you don't want to lose. Make sure you bag it, or you have to buy a new one. And then I will take out the push rod from the opposite side because it's dirty, so I don't want to push it all the way through. And it just slides out. There's nothing holding it in. It's just this rod with this end. It's gunky because it's underneath the front sprocket cover. And I haven't really cleaned this up yet. So I pulled that through the other side. And I'm going to bag the top hat and the ball bearing. And I won't lose it. This nut, clutch basket nut, is 27 millimeter. You wouldn't need a deep well, but you get away with it. This little, there's a lock washer there. You don't want to bend the tabs up. Most of the time I get away with not bending the tabs and just using this. I'm going to use the impact wrench because it's easier. I'm not even going to bother filming it because I got them with the camera. And I'm just going to zip this nut off. Otherwise, you're going to have to come up with the only way to hold it. This is, I want to say, 52 foot-pounds. Don't quote me. I'll give you four torque specs when I put the thing back together. So it's on there pretty tight. So you do might need somebody to hold it or whatever if you don't have impact tools. Okay, it was just a quick hit with, hit with the impact to loosen it up. I'll spin it off the rest of the way by hand. This removes here, and then this tabbed washer we remove too. I'm just going to pull it out as a unit. Grab onto the post here and wiggle, and you'll take the plates with it as well. Everything will come off. There is a big old washer on the back side. Flip this around carefully. Most of the time it gets stuck to it, and that's fine, but if make sure you take this with it. It's big. Notice the way it goes, and the slash marks are to the back. Sorry, it doesn't matter. Slash marks are either way. Still, keep it in the orientation it was. Plates, it does not matter. It does not matter if you end up accidentally spinning these things. It's fine, whatever. You can just leave them on. If you're replacing your clutch, you take these off. And there's steels. This is a fiber plate. The back stuck to it just with oil as a steel plate, it would come off as well. Steel plates teeth up on the inner, fiber plates teeth up on the outer. And then they spin together and then lock up and what have you. You can deglaze them, make people rub some really fine sandpaper around them. You get new clutch, a lot of people pre-soak them in oil if you want to do that. But these are the studs, the posts that break a lot, either on that or the pressure plate breaks, so careful of that. Keep it bagged together, you can just keep it as an assembly if you're doing your second gear, what have you, and leave it be. I'm going to bag it. Now, the inner basket has these gear, and the case hits this gear, so you can't just straight out pull it out. What you do, there is a procedure to use two bolts down in here with a puller. There's a hole here, and then a hole here. 
service manual gives them, I think they're an M6 something bolt, and you would bolt up there and then you'd draw it out that way. But if you just pull this out and wiggle it, and then kind of just wiggle it back, you will make the bearing expose itself, and then you can pull the bearing out yourself. Just do that a couple times. Magnet. this out, this would be the inner part. Bearing is still attached here, so keep this someplace clean. This is all clean plastic. And if you do this and go at an angle, be mindful of the bearing surface in here. You can push the bearing out the rest of the way if you wanted. And now that's free, and I'm going to put this part back inside there. And there's also this washer plate back here. Keep this together maintain its orientation with the other components. And now I'm going to bag this. I can give you a better view of what's inside here. I'll zoom in and come down. So this right here is the shift shaft assembly. And right now once you have the clutch off you can just pull this out. And this is the star gear it turns, this is the detent. Mine keeps jamming up on me in gear, I can't shift. I don't know if this tab's bent or not, I don't know if I'll have to replace this shaft. The shaft is only 800 miles on it, and it's like my third shaft. So on the other side is a nylon sleeve. Just slide that off the opposite side of the shaft. It's where the shift linkage attaches. Here is that thing. Pretty dirty, didn't clean it up much over there. And then there's also an oil seal on the other side as well. So when you pull this through, be aware of that so you don't nick the seal with the splines. Let me just slide it through quick. It's really not such a big deal. Just go gingerly. Wipe off the shaft on the opposite side before you pull it through. And just slide it off. Here is a removed shift shaft. Uh, so this pra hooks up with the star gear and this goes off the pivot point here and this tab here is the tab that gets bent. This one is too close to tell honestly I'd have to compare it to some of my bad ones. It's pretty close to straight but not quite straight. Some people try to bend it. If you're gonna bend it you definitely gotta add heat otherwise they crack right away. There's not too much wear on this. I'm hoping I might be able to reuse it if you decide to reuse it and you have issues later on, it's not such a big deal to pull the clutch cover off and the clutch off with the bike on the, in the motor. The motor in the bike if you're having issues later on, because this is 50 bucks, I want to say. Online prices, retail, I think is somewhere in the 70s. So once that's out, you got more access to other things. I'm going to put this aside. And we'll look in here a little deeper at what would be required for a shift kit install. You know, it's a pain in the butt. People do it without removing the clutch, and there's a nice how-to on how to do it, and it certainly is a nice how-to. I think it's easier to take the clutch off because the clutch is not that difficult to take off. That's the star gear. This is the detent arm. Let me point with this. This is the detent arm. Mine has bearings on it because I've done it. And then the spring is this spring here. And then this is the bolt that retains it underneath the oil pump. Let me get you a better angle. better. So this and this and this. Star cam here. Right now my bike is in neutral because it's on this hump and this is part of the shift drum assembly which we'll see later on when we pull this stuff out to get to it. Uh, oil pans underneath here. There's a strainer here. This is an oil pump drive gear. It can spin. You could play with it if you want. No big deal. That'll have to come off and then this comes off and this comes off. But Say you just want to do a shift kit, once you have this off, you can pull this gear off without much issue. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. There's three bolts, you line them up with the whole 5mm cap screws, take that off, and this will come off. You have unrestricted access. When I did mine, I left the oil pump gear on, but I did take the clutch off. I take that back. 
first one on mine, I used the how-to and was paying the ass with the zip tie and everything on my buddy's bike. I did it with taking the clutch off and was so much happier I took the clutch off. Because this spring can suck. You still want to use the zip tie method to help you keep it compressed and get it all together. But it's nice to have the extra clearance and to get in there. So it's just this arm and this spring is your shift kit. But pulling the clutch off, cover bolts. One tricky part is the one big nut, which there's lots of ways around that, as I've said already. Slide it off, keep it as an assembly, mark the pressure plate so it can go back the way it was. It's really only like a 20 minute job to get all that stuff off. And if the bike is not side stand, you won't lose any oil. And then slide the shift shaft out, and then you have access to this, exactly where we are right now. And it's very accessible.